Hey, what is up guys? Uh, welcome back to the Let's Build That App.com channel. Uh, today's video, I uh, just wanted to um, list out a couple of different ideas that I have about the Swift UI development framework. Um, so I think we've all gotten a lot more experience as to what the framework is capable of doing over the past couple of months. And, you know, for the most part, Swift UI has been out for, I would say, half a year now, ever since w, uh, WWDC of 2019. So let me list out three things that I find uh, really enjoyable about Swift UI. And then I have three things that I don't really like so much, okay? So if you're uh, listening to this as like a podcast during your commute, uh, please uh, feel free to just turn off the video and <laughs> listen to the audio. Okay, so the thing that's most amazing about Swift UI is that um, if you've been playing around with a preview panel, uh, it's really amazing because you can pretty much hot reload anything that you're working on at that moment in time. Uh, this means that you don't have to click through you know 20 different screens in your application uh, just to get to the view that you're working on. Uh, this way you save a lot of time just hot reloading things in the preview. This is pretty obvious, I would assume. Uh, the second, the second thing that's great about Swift UI is that now uh, reactive programming is treated as sort of a first-class citizen instead of iOS development. So, for example, you're you're gonna have things such as bindings, observable objects, uh, published variables, and environment objects. And the whole the whole point of uh, reactive programming is to get rid of a lot of the boilerplate code that you have to type out otherwise. So, for example, if you're developing a like a credit card form that has maybe 10 or 15 different fields that you have to fill out. Uh, typically in UI kit development, you have to track all of the text changing manually and then store the text change in a variable. And uh, inside of Swift UI, you don't have to do any of that. You just use a binding and that's pretty much it. Uh, all the magic occurs within the combined framework. So reactive programming is uh, pretty awesome. Uh, the last thing that I find myself really enjoying is that if you want to, if you want to develop a Mac OS, iPad OS, or a TV OS application, uh, you can do that just using the Swift UI framework. So for a, for a client project that I'm working on right now, uh, we're developing a video streaming application and, uh, you can imagine there's a lot of things that you have to test with video streaming. So I was able to quickly prototype a Mac OS application just to test out our streaming platform. And I was able to do it within like a half a day, like four or five hours. And just using Swift UI to build it out was pretty easy. So uh, now that we have the option to develop for Mac, iPad, and tvOS using the same UI architecture, it just makes our lives uh, so much easier as uh, iOS developers. Okay, now is the interesting part as to what's not so great about Swift UI. And I'm going to assume that some of you guys have uh, probably the same feelings that I do. So one really uh, annoying, frustrating aspect of Swift UI is that uh, the compiler errors instead of Xcode uh, is pretty confusing and is downright wrong most of the time. And... Uh, what you'll often find is that if you read the actual compiler error or warning, uh, it'll actually lead you down the wrong path and you'll just waste a lot of time. So one improvement that I hope to see by the end of 2020 is that hopefully the Swift UI team can improve uh, the actual inference engine and hopefully the, the Xcode editor can better tell uh, what's wrong with your Swift UI syntax. Okay, so uh, yeah, that's pretty basic. And I think a lot of you agree with me that this is probably one of the major issues right now. Uh, the second thing that's uh, kind of frustrating, it's not terrible, but Swift UI is missing a lot of basic components right now. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if by version two, all these issues will be resolved. But for example, um, if you try to implement some kind of grid instead of Swift UI, it's it's kind of possible, but it's not possible at the same time. So you can apply a, a lot of tricks with vStack and hStacking to get a grid inside of SwiftUI, but uh, it's pretty inefficient and I find it to be pretty slow. So, you know, not having a grid is 
not the end of the world, but uh, it's a pretty basic component that I would expect a framework such as SwiftUI to have. Uh, there's things like the refresh control. You can't really implement a re refresh control to drag down a refresh right now. Um, if you try to manage the status bar, uh, maybe dark and light scheme inside of the uh, inside of your SwiftUI views, you can't really manage that uh, per view. Uh, if you try to implement something creative with the scroll view, uh, you know, for example, maybe if you drag down, you want to expand the header or something like that. Uh, that's kind of difficult right now as well. I've seen some tricks online that uses a global uh, coordinate space, but that seems like a pretty big hack. So again, I would assume that the SwiftUI team is going to address a lot of these basic components and, you know, build them out natively. Uh, inside of Swift UI by the end of version two. Uh, lastly, so this uh, the last topic is pretty similar to the first one. Uh, I would hope to see better autocomplete inside of Swift UI. Uh, you'll find yourself um, mostly when you're developing a Swift UI application, you're going to have a lot of stacking and uh, a lot of nested UI components. And uh, you know, after a certain amount of stacking, both you and the compiler is going to get get pretty confused as to what you're doing. And then what happens a lot of times is that the autocomplete's gonna totally fail and you're gonna find that it's almost better just to type out all of the code yourself and just ignore the autocomplete. So, you know, having coded uh, iOS applications for a while, having autocomplete is a nice luxury that I think a lot of us have uh, taken for granted for a while. So, Again, by the end of version two, I would hope that the autocomplete is fixed, but uh, you know, with the track record of Xcode being broken for so long, uh, I don't really have high hopes for better autocomplete. So yeah, 